The United States was a land of immigrants since before it became an independent nation. For centuries, people from all over the world have come here to improve their lives. Some flee political persecution or religious discrimination. Some seek economic opportunities. Others want to be part of a dynamic cultural scene. In 2003, the U.S. Customs and Immigration Service reported that approximately three-quarters of a million people had immigrated to the U.S. Um, so what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Raul. I'm from Mexico City. And how long have you been in the U.S.? More than 10 years. And why did you come? Why did I come to U.S.? Because it was something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to know this country. I wanted, it was like a dream. Why? I mean, what made you dream about the United States? And what did you imagine? Well, the dream was like, um, like to live here, to, to live in the society where everything was supposed to be right and nice and you'll be able to make money, to help yourself, to, to learn. I always wanted to learn English. That was my main goal. My name is Yuna, I'm from Flushing. Okay, and what country are you from originally? Korea. And how long have you been in the United States? Uh, ten, more than 10 years now. Okay, how old were you when you came? 13. And what made you come to the U.S.? To study, I guess. <laughs> I was really young, so I guess I just followed what, you know, uh, others around around me said, you know, would be better for me. And they recommended that I come to the United States and study. What Raul and Yuna have in common is that they have no papers allowing them to stay in the United States. They are referred to as undocumented immigrants. There are many reasons that a person may not have papers. Some people cross the border without going through customs. Others come as tourists and overstay their visas. Still others are smuggled into the U.S. to work. Victor Zavala Sr., who was arrested by immigration officers during a raid on a New Jersey Walmart, explains how he got his job there. How did you get this job? A man went by out here, and he asked, you guys want to work? And my sons went to the first store. And did they ask you anything about your social security number or working papers? Nothing. That's why we were able to get in, because they didn't ask for anything. Workers without papers are vulnerable and have little legal recourse. That means they're often unable to hold their ground on wages and working conditions against exploitative employers. Saru Jayaraman, the executive director of the Restaurant Opportunity Center of New York, explains. Frankly, employers prefer undocumented immigrants over all others. We've had a number of situations where em employees, workers, will come to us and say, my, my boss wants to fire me because I'm trying to become legal. Um, employers prefer undocumented workers because they know that they can pay them less than the minimum wage and exploit them and abuse them and there will be no complaint. There will be slaves. So um, given that workers are, those workers are the base of the economy and given that employers actually prefer them, I think people need to understand that they're here to stay, number one. Number two, that they contribute so much to this economy. And number three, the only way that things are going to improve for all of us, legal, you know, undocumented, uh, immigrants, non-immigrants, for all workers, the only way that things are going to improve is to bring up the bottom. Because as long as employers are able to hire undocumented workers or people who they're able to threaten, then all of us, all of our wages are brought down. If things are so difficult on so many levels, why do people continue to come to the United States? There are factors that push people to leave home, just as there are forces that pull them toward the industrialized nations of North America and Europe. Certainly one reason that people leave their own countries is the lack of work. 
a joint economic study of NAFTA issued by think tanks from the U.S., Mexico, and Canada, found that instead of fostering better working conditions, NAFTA has degraded them. Why did you leave Mexico? Why did you come here? We left our country because our country's economy is really devalued, very weak. Life is really expensive in Mexico. And salaries aren't good enough to cover the costs. Would you please give an example of what you would earn in a month if you were working in Mexico? And how much it would cost you to live? In Mexico, I earned 500 pesos a week, or 2,000 Mexican pesos a month. From that, we had to pay the utilities, such as the water, phone, electricity. And all of that adds up to much more than what I usually earned. For example, the rent, electricity, gas, etc. How much would that come to altogether? Approximately 2,500 Mexican pesos. That is, 500 pesos more than what you could earn in a month. Exactly. So, because the salaries are low, we would have to borrow money to cover our expenses in our country. That is where we are from, and our families, everything we know is there. Even so, my salary wasn't enough to live on, unfortunately. We were constantly getting into debt to stay there, to live in our own country. In addition to exploitation at work and worries about being able to stay in the United States, Discrimination is another common hardship. This documentary aims to represent immigrants from as many areas of the world as possible, but we couldn't find a single undocumented man from the Middle East, North Africa, or South Asia who would talk to us. The assistant director of the Restaurant Opportunities Center of New York, who is himself from Morocco, explains. First week of the watch of 9-11, I was with my wife in Postmark shopping, and uh, this guy, my wife is talking to him, and my wife is putting the veil on, and she asked him questions, and the guy is just ignoring her like two, three times. Then I told him, yeah, what's going on? Why you are not talking to her? He said, well, you don't know what you did, guys? You know, you don't know the World Trade Center? Then I was really mad because I lost 73 people of my co-work at the World Trade Center, and since that day, or since 9-11, I was working my, all my things, all my all my body with the families, with the workers, with the displaced workers, and somebody like this come and talk to me like that. I was really furious. Then I started screaming at him. And the manager came and he told me what's going on. I said, this is what's going on, and I don't accept this. He understand that he told me that we're going to take action with him. But I never go back to Potsmark since then, and I don't know what's happened to the guy. While people may come to the United States to work, they bring themselves as whole human beings, which means that they participate in society on many levels. Yuna has been working with a coalition of people for a bill called the DREAM Act that would give young people an opportunity to adjust their status and to go to college. Mario used to work at Windows on the World, the restaurant on top of the World Trade Center. Now he is campaigning for a special visa that would help other undocumented immigrants who lost their jobs and family members on September 11th. When we first came over here, we didn't know nothing. We came to the unknown. So we were used, yes, looking for better life conditions. We were looking for the American way of living. We were looking for our American dream. That's what we found. But after October 23rd, we don't know nothing. It's not easy to find a job because we're always looking everywhere. If somebody's looking for us, uh, like my sons, when are they gonna send them back to send them back home? And, uh, and now we know that if we don't pay taxes, that we don't pay nothing, 
we don't have no right for nothing. And over here, life is so expensive, but we have to work, we have to eat, we have to pay our bills, and we don't want to go back. Because we want to contribute with this country. We are trying to behave, we're trying to be good, we're trying to be good persons. That's what we're trying. And one of my dreams is that we want to be good citizens. It doesn't matter where we came from. We just trying to, we just trying to make a living over here.